Uh, hi guys, welcome to my uh, second video. Um, I have just finished painting uh, four uh, Pneasis models uh, and two Braves models for the uh, upcoming um, tournament in pool. Uh, I have filmed the process, uh, the lengthy process. I didn't have much time to paint uh, this month, so it took me a few sessions, but the whole month uh, to finish off these guys. Um, uh, I'm quite happy with them. Uh, as I said, I filmed the whole thing, uh, but it seems like a very lengthy, uh, very lengthy video. Uh, not yeah, I thought uh, it would be much better to make a video in a day. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now um, and some of the uh, elements of the video that videos that I was making while painting these guys uh, could be then short clips you know for example uh, on how to war paint or you know how to do different uh, tattoos and stuff so like a little comp uh, compilations uh, compilations of how to make uh this uh, this guys distinguish like you know with character individual uh, so that's what i'm going to do but what i'm going to uh, to show you now is how to paint that guy uh, so this is the primer i used to uh, prime the miniature is the color forge trench brown uh, with matte finish amazing amazing paint uh it i would say it's citadel spray quality but cheaper and uh, slightly bigger um definitely a primer that i will be going for from now on it's not the first one that i used i think i have three now but what is amazing about this particular one is that uh the brown color is uh, literally um the same as uh foundry's uh, south american flash that I was using to paint the skin of the models with. Uh, so when I was painting the first few models that I showed you just now, um, I realized that they are identical. So um, to skip uh, the process a little bit, I just prime miniatures now, unless obviously I want a darker skin color. Um, and put the highlights of the South American flesh light uh, on it straight straight on the primer and you can't really say uh, see the difference so if you want to go for uh, that skin tone as uh, I am painting this is this is your friend okay so I'm going to paint his trousers uh, red I am using uh mephiston red uh citadel base color um which works just fine with uh all the other guys i've painted covers very well so i'm going to paint the trousers uh with living elements here and that and there um to be painted in different colors um uh, So yeah, uh, so I'm going to do it to the whole trousers area and I am going to come back when it is painted. Okay, so trousers, this element of trousers is finished. I'm going now to use a shapti bone for uh, some uh, details and groin cloth as well. Um, This may need a few layers uh, as it doesn't cover as well as the red paint, which is absolutely fine. No problem at all. So I will paint all that. And the ropes. Thinking of it. But as I said, that's 
it's gonna take a few layers and a bit of patience okay so i do that here i do it on the other side okay all the way down i'm going to do it off camera because uh, you see what I'm doing. I'm just touching it and I'm going to go over until it's fully covered and, I, and I'm happy with the coverage. I'm also, also going to paint the, uh, as you see, the rope uh, on this side. Um, and go okay, so it. next I'm going to use Abaddon Black. Uh, for all the black areas, the areas that I want uh, to be black, so this that um, hair uh, musket um, and few other places, I'm going to show you touch everything that I'm gonna paint black, uh, and then I'm just gonna cut. Okay, so here we go. It's time for. Um, black elements so let's start with this and again uh, i think i need to find a uh, black that is working better um, than a button black for me uh not a big fan of this particular one i use it because i have plenty of it uh, for various reasons and i tend not to buy paint that i have um but i need i don't know maybe you have some recommendation of what to use uh something that covers well uh, because, as I said, um, this one is not the greatest, at least in my opinion. Okay, so I got that. I'm going to paint this one as well. And then I'm going to paint hair. I will also paint musket at least the metal part of it. Uh, I will be leaving the wooden bit to paint with different shade of, um, of brown later. So we've got that, we've got hair. What else I'm going to paint? Probably some of the, that will do as well. Okay, so all the elements that I wanted to be black are now black. The hair uh, and stuff. Um, as you saw me a moment ago, I was painting this fragment here. But I'm going to actually paint it uh, brown just because I may end up with uh, some war paint over there that could be potentially black. So I want to have something different um, over there. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to paint the belt and I'm going to use a scrap brown for it. So yeah, just, uh, just a belt. Um, These miniatures are just phenomenal, to be honest. They have so much detail that um, it makes it easier to make it look good, to be honest. Uh, so defined. And with belt in particular, the system I use with uh, animal paints and uh, white spirit actually doesn't involve much work except from just painting it brown. Okay, so with uh, brown painted here on the bag and there, we can move on to the next uh, uh, step, which will be Morphan Brown. Uh, and I am going to paint the bag in here, the uh, shoes um, and this bits here uh, as well. Uh, and 
and we'll see what else but uh, let's just get on with it so i said the bag okay here we go Morphang Brown will need a few layers to cover, um, which is fine actually. I really like this paint, it was one of my early favorites. Uh, okay, let's do the rope as well. Right. Or the string, or whatever. Okay, so Morphang Brown is finished. I am now going to use uh, Rhinox Hide, but you can use any dark brown or whatever your color scheme preference is to paint the powder pouch here and the I need some more water. Just get in there. will do and the last bit in here okay Here we go. So that's that. Uh, next up is uh, Gorter Brown uh, that I use for any wooden um, areas of the miniature. So the club and uh, the musket. When I'm done with painting these, I'll be back. Okay, so that's now done. Um, and next what I'm going to do is something that I've missed uh, in the first step. Uh, is the red bit here on the head. So I'm just gonna... It's very textured, so I am painting, but also tapping it a little bit to make sure I get paint nicely in the recesses. Here we go. And that allowed me to um, see a bit of hair that, that I have missed, um, which I am going to paint now as well while I am at it. Um, it's just this tiny little element here between the feather and the... Okay, so we are very close to finish um, the base colors. What I'm going to do now is use the Foundry uh, South uh, American uh, flash uh, to cover the areas that I've missed when priming and fix some uh, mistakes I've done now. Right, so I have some uh, mistake here. I have some skin painted brown uh, from the belt. It needs some correction in here by the arm. And in fact, it needs some paint because it seems like primer didn't really touch it there very well. So here we go. We need some paint in there. 
see this arm is almost untouched here. Annoyingly. Okay, so I'm going to use black to add some details to tips of the feathers. A bit more paint needed for that. Here we go. And on this side. side and actually tidy up the black element that I just messed up. I will need some uh, here we are. Yep, that will do. Okay, and there's another thing I missed. I'm just going to use um, a sharp the bone to paint. necklace rope bit I could have arguably left it as it was but let's just make a variation Just to represent it. Okay, with that done, uh, next step is to add highlights to uh, to skin. So I just paint all the raised areas with um, South American flashlight. So slightly, as you can see, darker and brighter. Um, option of that South American flash range and that's just gonna work really nice with the paint we've got as a primer so I just go through all the raised areas I'm not doing any blending or anything like that uh, because all the blending will be done by the wash and it will bring it all together very nicely so quick job really just get all the raised areas painted show the muscles of the mini And the muscles are very well defined in this um, in the sculpt, so it is kind of an easy easy job to do that. Obviously, with hands, it's a little bit. I'm also going to do it with uh, with the face, although I'm not entirely sure if we're not going to cover it later. Uh, but I really like to 
have that option uh, you know that he may just have a tattoo or or something and no war paint so i want to be prepared for that uh, because i tend to decide of how i am painting a uh, facial uh, face uh, facial expressions uh, facial uh, war paint uh, at the end of the process so you know let's do here a little bit as well there you go i really like to have that op option open to myself okay so with that done i am going now to uh paint the whole skin with seraphim sepia uh this is my favorite uh wash from citadel and uh, um well simply because of what i use it for uh, i'm sure people have different preferences but in terms of like covering brown and the effect it gives to the native american uh, miniatures that i've been painting recently is just spot on perfect uh, it's not too dark doesn't look dirty like you know agrax or known oil can be uh, it's just perfect fix for this lot of miniatures so yeah i go around the whole whole body face try to not leave any pools i have done it in the past and although it wasn't tragic uh, you know it's nicer not to have it so i'm just going to do the one layer for the whole miniature uh, and there will be second layer used but that's after i'll add all the tattoos and whatever i need to add on on it um so yeah when i finish i'll be back okay, so with the skin painted um uh, still drying a little bit but i can move on to the next step uh, is uh, to actually add wash animal wash uh, to all uh areas that are not skin that includes hair and all the clothing and weapons um so i will be covering it all over uh with different uh brush because and this is different type of paint and uh, um, it requires different way of cl uh, cleaning and can mess up like you can mess up your uh, nice paints with doing that so i'm just going all over all over the miniature um, without caring much uh, to be honest it's like really quick a uh, job just cover it all and just be careful on the skin of course <laughs> you don't want to mess that that one up but uh, in terms of like clothing and big areas you can just go wild uh, as i go here um, so when i finish you see I, i'm going I, I go, i'm literally painting everything so hair weapons belt patches or however you call it uh, even feathers and headgear whatever it's called um, everything uh, so when i'm done with it uh, i'll be back okay so um the whole Im uh, much uh, miniature is now painted with the winter stricken grime and what i'm going to do now is to remove uh, some of it uh, with white spirit that I kind of hold in a little uh, 
container like this um, what I use for it is that and the brush so I dab you know make it wet and then touch uh, the areas that are painted with the enamel and as you see um, the red or the color from underneath of the wash that I just used starts to come come out to the floor. Okay, and I just keep um, removing the winter stricken grime from all of the miniature. As you can see, it kind of creates this highlights just by dapping you can also use um, look at this is what I meant look how defined it becomes and all I do is literally just wash it and then remove most of that wash with white spirit that's the magic trick that i've been using on these miniatures of course it's nothing new for many people but uh, you know it's always good to see it in action and see you know what you can do with it what's uh, what miniatures you gonna use it on and if i cannot reach all the way i'm taking the same brush that i have used a moment ago and just go in the places that i cannot go use some tissue to remove the excess and go back at it look can you can you actually see how nicely it clears everything so not to waste much time uh, uh, to wait for the white spirit to dry uh, i am actually going to add some tattoos on the guy's forearms what i use for tattoos is uh, the pigma micron 003 uh, archival ink pen uh, this is actually a technique that I've seen first on Stigma uh, Miniatures uh, YouTube channel. And since then I saw quite a few people using it. Uh, it's also very good for, uh, for eyes, as you will see later on. A really, really good technique. So I'm going to add something to this hand and something to that hand maybe. Um, I think I am just going to do like a very simple, very simple idea. Uh, you can see it. Uh, you know, you can be quite precise with with this pen. Obviously, not necessarily always perfect, uh, as I've learned. Uh, it gives you so much e I think it's all to do with patience again I mean if you are patient enough to really try to get your lines uh, perfect you can uh, but I tend to give it a reasonably good and quick go without dwelling much if I mess it up I never yet repainted or um, skin after adding a tattoo to it um, I could paint in for example you know if one of these triangles is really not looking good at all i may paint it in 
uh, to save it but that's about it so here we go that's the first tattoo uh maybe let's just do another line here always looks a bit nicer here we go and how about some dots Usually I go about this step uh, after I uh, paint over the, here I'm just gonna do, it doesn't want to work, here we go. looks like a line not like a dot okay let's do a bigger dot here we go so that's his tattoos done uh, I don't think he needs any more uh, especially that I'm going to paint his face in uh, some way uh, and while we're waiting for drying I can actually show you what I use uh, you know the same books I showed you uh, before uh, so King Philip's War you can actually see different war paints on artwork in here uh, and that's what I tend to use, look, uh, different stuff. That's that's the type of books that I tend to use. Uh, that's the picture from the cover that I use for my um, reference. And uh, this set of books as well uh, from Osprey. You see, like, work like that, you know, or... This one is pretty nice, I think. I may actually go for this one this time. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do with my guy. But maybe change red to white. Still use the black patch there. Then change this to white with white lines there. That's going to be my um, that's going to be my guy. So with that done, uh, we can move on to the next step. Uh, which is uh, bring this um, some of the areas on trousers and other things up a bit from that uh, you know just as I said raise the areas but also like on these trousers there's loads of little creases and you can really make it look nice so uh, this is the step where i actually bring all that up a bit uh, and i go through the whole miniature again give it attention it needs It's not uh, that daunting process. At the beginning, I thought, oh my God, I have to go through it again and stuff. But it's actually, with time, it, uh, it, uh, it becomes faster and uh, easier to do. And I have painted a few miniatures from that range already. So I had my training. And uh, you'll have yours if you want to paint them like this. And there. I'm not going to touch uh, black um, at all because I actually like what 
the pain do it so the only thing that's left to kind of bring up a bit is the top here and just make sure everything is nicely back to where i want it to be done uh, so next in line was a shanty bone so again that's what we do just grab a little bit and bring up slightly I'm trying not to overdo it but I want to have enough to you know here we go I can leave that as it is, but there we go. A little bit over there, not too much, just the raised ones. And here, the same. Yeah. So, next one. Is our scrug brown. As you see, I just go uh, with the colors that I have already. Now, with scrug brown, it's a question do you want to actually add a little bit over here? It's already nicely, you know, defined, but a little touch never. can be nicely used here we go it's so nicely raised that you don't have to even try to pretend to paint this line it's just slightly go over it gently touch it so some of that brown comes up and it looks like it it pops a bit more do the same with here no need to overdo it now our weapons okay quarter brown bring that back a little bit not on the whole areas now just gently over the raised areas here we go that's much better now actually feels like i'm painting something and here <laughs> next will be more fun brown which i don't have on the palette anymore so we just add a little bit more through the bag a little bit Shoes. Oh, here. Okay, so just in the middle and the strips in the middle and the strips. Okay, next will be a little bit of white that I have here. Oh. Let's clean this brush. Okay. So the white element, so the teeth. Well, if I'm not mistaken, that's all the basics done. So what I would do next is uh, paint over the flesh again, over the skin. But I can see that the ink is not dry yet. So straight away, I am going to go um, and work on that 
war paint and I said I'm going to uh, do the white war paint on his face simply because I think I have only one miniature that have white all over so that may actually give some extra coolness to it and I think I'm just gonna go under under the eyes there So, you know, like the first miniature I paint with the like, uh, with the white uh, war paint on at least half of the face was a struggle because I didn't know what to do, uh, how to bring eyes to life. And then I was just like, okay, uh, it's not looking good. So I just had to do some... Uh, strip along the eyes uh, and I think I used red for that and I'm going to use red for this one as well um, as soon as this guy dries so here we go he's getting ready for war okay uh, while I'm waiting for everything else to dry I'm just going to start working on the base uh, there's no time to waste uh, I'm going to use technical steel and mud uh, to cover the bottom of the base so I basically take quite a bit and drop it on and then spread it out so that can already start drying for the final steps of the miniature painting that will actually allow me to finish hopefully earlier than i was planning uh, i try not to cover shoes too much um, but even if i do i mean you know if we are walking in the forest or if we are walking in the mud in our shoes, we tend to bring them dirty. So if I touch it slightly, I won't be too bothered. Because that's okay. Okay, so this is the step. How is my... Yeah, the face is, seems to be ready now to uh, be worked on. So I'm going back to red. And just adding a strip of red over over the eyes and that will bring balance to the force <laughs> and this will actually allow me to go in there again and do some white I messed up in here, so I'm going to try and cover it with white again a little bit. Here we go. That will do. Okay, I think I'm pleased with that. Let's get, let's bring that white on the forehead a bit. Here we go. Fixed. Okay, it seems like I've lost a little bit of of um, of the video there, but what I did in between time, I just like as you can see, I'm adding a little bit 
more um, lines in here on the face uh, so here we go Okay, and the next is to um, paint the eyes. I usually paint a little bit more and then bring it back with the color of the, with the base color so in this case it will be red so we just have to wait for that to dry so now I will be um, bringing that eyes to to a nice shape, give this eyes a nice shape. Okay, so the eyes seem to be close to what I need them to be. And I think we can move to the next, next, next step, which will be uh, using the micro uh, micron pen to do the eyes to pupils so basically what i do i hold it tight and then i still support it with my thumb and i tend to go for the top bit of the eye here we go i will be happy with this okay it makes it makes looks so because he's looking slightly this way I have to now adjust and move slightly to the right here we go uh, that's his eyes done quite pleased with that the the one thing that I tend to do uh, to clear it if you look at it from this perspective hang on let me see if I can uh, the pupils sometimes go on the on the red or whatever base color you've got in there um, and I tend to just clear it off because you don't have pupils on your there you go that's fixed so right so he's basically done the only thing that's left to do in here is to give the second layer of uh, a seraphim sepia on the back. okay so we just go through the whole miniatures with uh, seraphim sepia um, and what i mean by the whole miniature obviously i mean flesh skin okay almost there and the last bit that's gonna have to be done at this stage is going to be basing well for basing basing is uh, rather simple for me so i use a uh, step grass from army painter i use uh, some flowers from uh, gamers grass and some flock also from army painter although i prefer the gamer grass flock i just bought army painter and now i have to use it um, the gamer grass is my to go uh, to go to in yeah. terms in terms of uh, basing so basically what i do i cover the area with a little circle here free from glue leaving some space in here and some space in here for a grass flock and uh, cover everything else with the glue here we are okay a 
over there as well. Um, so what I'm going to do next is add some grass on it. So let me just move this away and then just dab it there. Uh, I know people. Oh, but I just do it this way and then remove the excess. Uh, and then I search for the area that I actually left without glue. Here we go, like that, in both sides. Easily find, found, usually. And with this areas clean, uh, I can add flowers. And grass. Here we go. So that's the base done. And the next thing I do is use Abaddon Black to paint the rim of the base. Okay, so our mini is now finished. All I have to do is to varnish it with uh, AK Interactive uh, Ultra Varnish. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I have to show that, but maybe I'll just start with a little bit. Um, I'll literally just go all over the miniature. Uh, make sure uh, the varnish doesn't pull, so, you know, clear it off after you overdone it um, just go all, all over um, and that will bring it and I'll show you how it looks like when it dries after uh, adding varnish you don't have to see the whole process for sure okay here he is finished he can join his uh, friends that I painted yesterday or his friends that I've painted a long time ago. You know, uh, so he's done. I'm uh, quite pleased with it. And I hope, uh, you know, you'll find this uh, interesting and informing. Um, and yeah, see you on the next video.